Hi, uh, I'm Art Bergeron, and if you haven't seen this show before, um, this is Frank and Mary here in Westboro. My wonderful co-host is Shelby Marshall. She was on last week because I was not well, um, but when I'm back, and uh, and Shelby, we I know we had taken a break for for uh, the summer, and in the and during the summer, Shelby just like saved up all of these like great guests to be inviting in the fall. So so Shelby's going to be you know talking about these folks. Shelby, whom do we have today? And first of all, it's great to see you again after after a summer off. Yes. You look you look refreshed. Just as you know, do you. Back, back to back to government as usual, right? Does government as usual. Government yeah, as my usual. my facelift worked well, so I recovered. <laughs> see, mine didn't. Mine didn't, obviously. <laughs> right? I need a little, I, I forgot the neck tuck though, but that's that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Next year, that'll be next year's, right? Say, keep saving up. So who right. do we have today? Yeah, Arthur, great to see you. I'm very excited about today's guests. Uh, we have Laura Hogan and Terry Gavin. They are part of a community organization here in Westboro called In Your Shoes. Um, they're gonna talk to us a little bit about In Your Shoes, uh, what it is, how it was created, what they do. Um, and then we're gonna springboard to talk about one of their uh, latest projects. Um, called the Little Free Pantry, which um, is a nationwide initiative as we'll learn, um, but it's now here in Westboro. So Laura and Terry, welcome and thanks so much for being our guests. Thank you, Shelby. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having us. Yes, yeah, so me... Terry and I have worked um, uh, before directly. Um, Terry is a member of the uh, Community COVID-19 Task Force. Uh, so we've been in many meetings together talking about how uh, as a community through both private public um, uh, efforts, uh, government, uh, that we can address the needs, um, many of the sort of unmet, if you will, sort of subtle fringe needs, if you will, of the community. And so it's uh, great to see you again, Terry. And Laura is uh, um, uh, famously known, at least in my book, for her organization of uh, the Appalachian Service Project Food Drives. Um, which uh, are, are phenomenal efforts. So Laura, it's great to have you here as our guest to talk about In Your Shoes. So tell us ladies, what is In Your Shoes and uh, what do you want the community to know about? I'll take it from here and then I'll pass it on to Laura. Uh, just to let you know that In Your Shoes was started in March of 2008 with my co-founder, Debbie Ledoux, who is the assistant town clerk. Um, the name came up real quick because her mom would always say, just put yourself in someone else's shoes. What great, you know, why couldn't you? We started, as I said, in 2008. We are 501c3. We help those in need in Westboro who live and work. We um, pay utility bills. We help with car insurance. We help with food. We do gift cards. We don't actually give you a check. We don't do it that way, but um, we've also put out um, coats. We're doing a coat drive in October as well. We've done Polar Plunge. We've raised money that way. <laughs> we've had a ball doing that. We've done that two or three times. Um, basically, we've also raised money for COVID, as Shelby had mentioned. While we were trying to raise money through the task force, it was a great need, so we took it upon ourselves to raise, I think, 6,000 that we distributed out. So we were very happy with that. And um, so then we came to the food pantry that we did a food drive back, I think it was last June. Does that sound right, Laura? Mm -hmm. Yep, May, yep. May, June, yep. And we did that, and Laura will explain how we came up with the little free pantry from there. But um, we just keep going. We have a strong women of 14 on our <laughs> members, and we're just blessed with what we are able to do. The Westboro community is just a wonderful community for that. So, so Terry, before we turn it over to Laura, um, if um, our friends Frank and Mary or their friends were interested in being part of In Your Shoes, what does it take to be a member? Oh, nothing actually. You just you could do a service member. It doesn't cost you anything. You could help out in any way that we when we do a project, or you could be a voting member as well. And that's fifty dollars that you pay in, as an annual fee. And you have 
when we get, I should have explained this before, sorry. When people are um, looking for some help, they usually fill out a grant and we have a grant committee who looks at it and they um, look and make sure it fits the mission. And if it does, they bring it back to the members and we vote on it. And okay. that's typically how that works. But you don't have to pay. You can just be a member. We love and just it. help. Yeah. Great. Okay. And we'll, um, for uh, Frank and Mary, we'll have all the contact information that we'll talk about for In Your Shoes in a little free pantry um, at, at the end of the show. So we'll make sure people can jot that down or take a screenshot of it. All right, Laura, to you. Um, well, uh, as Terry mentioned, so In Your Shoes has started um, in Westboro, a little free pantry. Um, and for those who aren't familiar with it, it is part of a national grassroots movement to combat hunger and food insecurity. <clears throat> Many of your viewers actually may be familiar with the Little Free Library. And so it is patterned after that, but instead of books, the Little Free Pantry is filled with non-perishable food, um, personal supplies or home goods. And in Westboro, you can find the Little Free Pantry now, or we like to fondly refer to it as the LFP. Um, it's located conveniently in the church uh, parking lot, St. Stephen's Church parking lot. It's 3 John Street in Westboro. So it's right in that downtown area across from the high school. It's a very convenient location. The Little Free Pantry is open 24 hours a day seven days a week. And so the basic guiding principle is take what you want and leave what you can. Anyone and everyone is invited to use it. So it's important to say the Little Free Pantry is really only meant to address an immediate need. It is not affiliated with the Westboro Food Pantry. And so what we've done is inside the Little Free Pantry, we have posted a community resource list. And so it's in various languages. So if people are coming um, to use the Little Free Pantry and they're unaware of community resources available, while they're there taking what they need, they will also see um, the other resources and community organizations that are available to them um, and their phone numbers. So it's one, an immediate need, and then also a hope to link people to other community resources. That, that is so important because I think that we, anyone who's done this type of work um, recognizes that when individuals have a need, it's, I mean, there may be an acute immediate need, but it's usually um, part of a, uh, a larger challenge they're facing in their mm -hmm. life. So it could mean that um, they're grieving, right? So maybe they need some counseling or there's um, a domestic situation that needs to be addressed. Um, um, it could be that they, you know, they're food insecure or whatever, whatever it might be. And so I know the um, uh, Youth and Family Services has compiled a community resource listing mm -hmm. um, and um, that is being widely distributed now. So it's great to see this um, connectivity and cohesion across, um, again, kind of both public and private efforts. Mm -hmm. It's what community is all about. And so if, if our folks, my, if my friends, Frank and Mary, who's, uh, and, and I didn't mention this in my intro because I was off for the summer, so I didn't. I forgot to put it in my intro. The Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. So if you're Frank and Mary, and you just want to be in your, but something bad happens, you know, there's you, things things happen, right? God mm -hmm. decides, you know, things just happen. So if things happen, so first of all, if I I, I could just show up at the little free pantry if some things happen and I just don't have some of these resources and I could just you know, like walk in and, and, and <laughs> take items out. So the Little Free Pantry is a freestanding structure. 
Um, it is located outside in the parking lot and it is um, a three foot by four foot wooden structure. And it is about two feet off the ground and it has shelves inside of it. And you would just walk up again. It's, um, it's convenient in that it's in the parking lot. And so it's easily accessible. You could drive right up to it. You don't need to park away, you know, far away and walk. You can drive right up to it. Um, and there's some out, uh, street lighting as well nearby. And yes, you can just open the pantry door and you will find um, there are personal, excuse me, personal care supplies. There are canned goods. There are snacks, anything that's non-perishable um, and stable, uh, shelf stable um, as available. And so you just help yourself, just, just help yourself. And if the, sometimes people come and they will drop stuff off and sometimes people will come and they take. All is perfectly, uh, Perfectly perfect. <laughs> you know, what, what's amazing when I first learned about this, the simplicity of the model is, mm -hmm. is sort of mind blowing. And it's, and, and I love that it is just that it's a structure. Anyone can come at any time. It's in a safe area. It's in a discreet area. So that if folks mm -hmm. are kind of like, Oh, you know, like, it's not like I go to go downtown and you know, there are a thousand cars driving by. Right. Um, um, interesting enough too, um, the uh, church um, also has a thrift store there. So there's sort of, there's a nice relationship there as well. Um, but uh, it, it, it is really just that take what you need. If you can leave something for someone else, great. And, and actually that sort of is a transition point to um, what is the process for restocking this? I know that it was sort of a, in your shoes had a pilot effort. Um, to get this off the ground and see how it would work. But I, I understand that you want some community involvement as well or encouraging that. Let me take it. <laughs> sure, sure. I'll try. I'll try. This is really Laura's baby. And I can't tell you how phenomenal she is. But anyway, let's go. <laughs> we'll just have a show on Laura next time. I know. Oh, oh, I know. <laughs> it's it's unbelievable. Right. Um, basically, what we do is there's actually a sign up genius, and we'd hope that people would go sign up for a day, two days, a week, a month. That's the hope. And they would go in and they would go to it. Maybe if they're doing it a week, we'd ask them to go three or four times a day. No, I mean a week, sorry. <laughs> and then um, just check on it, make sure that it's clean, make sure there's um, not expired food. And refill it, but we're not asking you to refill every shelf. We're asking you to do what's in your heart to, you know, that you feel that would um, help out at that point. Um, we also have what they call stewards and those people will go and they'll oversee what the volunteers are doing. So it just kind of helps each other, keeps, the, keeps it flowing and, and all that. And what we've done over the summer is we've had the pilot program as Shelby had mentioned, and we've asked those people if they would like to be the stewards because they have done it. They know what works, what doesn't work. And I think most of them have signed up to say yes, which we're thrilled with. So, and we're hoping this is going to be a community project, just not an in your shoes project. We want, we want the whole Westboro to be able to help out. Yeah, so this this is a, a great opportunity, Arthur, for, uh, could be a business, right, that wants to undertake a community project, and they're sort of like, how can we get more involved in the community? And so uh, by contacting um, In Your Shoes, and again, we'll have that contact information at the uh, end of the show, but um, just to sign up for a week. And so you'd have employees, you know, like, so you do like some sort of drive at the office, right? And then sure. bring those items down, check on them a couple times a week and um, great photo opportunity in, in front of the little free pantry. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and certainly um, putting um, really essential items, essential items that, you know, I'm sure many of us take for granted. Um, in the hands of those that need it. Um, what, one other thing I just wanted to talk a little bit about, as you mentioned, Laura, the uh, food pantry, right? So Westboro, we're really blessed here in Westboro. We've had um, um, 
the uh, Phil and uh, Phil, actually not his wife, but just Phil on um, in a prior show. We have a great food pantry. And um, so uh, this is not the food pantry. It doesn't replace it. I look at this as really complementing it and kind of mm -hmm. like you said, kind of more urgently needed or items maybe you couldn't get at the food pantry for one reason or another. Absolutely. This just fills a, a gap, really. Um, this is, and whereas what you would receive at the food pantry is much more extensive, those fresh meats, fresh eggs. So this, this is not that. This is yeah. um, what we found, though, during our trial period is um, the personal supplies are turning over very, very quickly. So those are very simple, toilet paper, laundry detergent, soap, toothbrushes, and toothpaste. And so I would say when Terry mentioned about donating, um, the, the in, part of this intention too is just to have a very simple way for our community to give back of all ages. And so it's very easy to donate. It could just be a bar of soap, a couple of tubes of toothpaste. It doesn't need to be bags of food if people want to get involved. And I know when I was raising my kids, I was always looking for something for the little kids. And it's often hard to get them involved because they're so young. Um, but this is perfect you know, a can of food. And that's that's totally appropriate and welcomed. So again, if, if this does not replace um, or even compete with the food, with the food pantry, we want people to be connected to the food pantry because that's going to give them um, whole nourishing foods on a consistent basis. Sure, sure. But I but suppose I know also that, one of the, oh, one of the genius, I'm sorry, but just one of the geniuses of this though, is that because you've kept it so simple, you know, and you've got non-perishable items. So there's no board of health issues. There's no kind yeah. of regulatory concerns. There's just, it's just, it's just really nice. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. And I can yeah. see a lot of seniors, once again, kind of adopting this, right? Because, because that's the point, you know, you're not being, you know, asked to write a check every month and do all of this stuff. You're just, if you want to help out, if you just want to help out. So it really kind of turns into more of a community thing. That's really yeah. something. And, and this is, you had mentioned, so this is uh, present in a number of communities across the country um, and several here in uh, Massachusetts, I believe, um, when we were um, waiting to, to go live, uh, Laura was telling us about Medford, is that correct? Yes, we've actually, we met with um, the administrator of um, the Medford system. And so they have 15 and I think I think it might be up to 21 and there I know there was talks of putting a community refrigerator too so these are at least 15 individual pantries again they look a lot like the little free pantry the little free library and and they have a, a wonderful communication system where on Facebook it says hey we need something to be refilled and people maybe kids have a lemonade stand and earn some money and refill so um, this is, people are one, have been very helpful to us to give us their success, uh, what works, what doesn't. Um, we also met with someone from um, Clarksburg, Maryland, and they were able to give us, again, some background and some suggestions. For, for example, we do have a lot of resources available for people who are interested, a shopping list, a resource mm -hmm. guide. Um, again, all available on the In Your Shoes website um, to help people feel comfortable about how and what's appropriate to donate. So um, Arthur, as we look at time, and I know you're the, the timekeeper, but you're also back from vacation. So I'm, I'm trying to help out here. Um, uh, I've, so... I've, been, I've been watching and it looks like we're okay. It looks like we yeah. have a lot. But, and I, but I was also going to ask you for a, you know, at the end, I know that we, you know, I'd ask, I'd ask you for a brief update regarding what's going on with the, with the selectmen stuff. So I just want sure, to make sure that yeah. that time is there. Because once again, it's, it's that season again, right? Everybody's, everybody's back and they've got their great ideas that they thought up over the summer and now they're kind of, <laughs> right? So before, uh, before we transition that, I did want to um, uh, give Laura and Terry an opportunity to talk about um, the open house or the ribbon cutting, if you will, I guess not an open house, um, 
the ribbon cutting that's taking place on Sunday, right? To sort of officially open. I mean, it's been open, but kind of the, the pomp and right. circumstance. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yes, it's going to be um, September 12th. This is this Sunday, 12 to 1 p.m. at St. Stephen's parking lot. There will be, you know, water and all that good stuff and a little bit of coloring for the kids and what food is to them and try to do it that way. And just a little update like we've done now of what we do. And we're just very excited about this and hope that everybody can come. Yeah. So, if, and what time is that at Terry, please? 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. All right. So if folks want to learn more about the little free pantry. Um, and, and, and for folks and for, Fra and for the Frank and Mary's of this world who say, well, you know, I, I, I'd love to be involved, but are there any old people in this or are this all these young, you know, <laughs> hard work, you know, uh, so there, uh, you have some folks of, of, you know, people like me, you know, who are volunteering or who are older. Oh, yes, we yes. have we have all ages in ours. We yeah. do have all ages. Yeah. <laughs> and it's Just very flexible. And it's very flexible, you know, the time could be, it could be one day, you know, it could be an informal thing where you just stop by and you donate. Right. The, it is right. very low stress, minimal time <laughs> commitment. So it's perfect if you have a busy schedule or you're traveling, you know, what have you. So sure. it's meant, it's, it's meant to welcome all. And, and, you know, one of the ways in, you know, even families, um, uh, or it really doesn't matter, little ones, but Laura, when you mentioned that, I mean, I think even like when I go to the dentist, right, and I get my new toothbrush, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, so I'm fortunate to have dental care, and I get my toothpaste, I have tubes of toothpaste, and while they're great for travel, if I'm going on a trip, I can certainly afford to run to CVS, but that's a great example of, okay, here's a brand new toothpaste, toothpaste and toothbrush that I could donate. So those are like mm -hmm. simple things mm -hmm. that exactly. um, uh, in ways in which people can, you know, we all accumulate that stuff. So, yeah, right. um, you know, as long as it's not expired and it's in good condition right. and not used, <laughs> right. not opened. Right. Um, well, this is just, ter this was yeah. just terrific. What a great, what a great intro to the kind of the fall season, right? And, and 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 once again, we're going to be showing whatever information you have. We'll put up on the uh, on the screen so that people can be you know connecting with you. And it's just right. really been wonderful. So now, before we end, I just want to want to go back to Shelby. So, what's going on? What is sure. going on in the? It, it, we've got a few, get, but we've got about three minutes to tell us uh, all of government in three my minutes. My stump speech. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. Um, so just really quickly, um, I did um, certainly want to acknowledge that. Um, Sadly, uh, Saturday will be the 20th anniversary of the uh, September 11th attacks um, on our nation. Uh, Westboro will be host hosting a remembrance ceremony on Saturday beginning, beginning at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, that will uh, take place uh, at the fire station. Um, so uh, obviously the public is welcome to attend that. Um, uh, the community may hear, will hear uh, bells ringing across the um, town, um, thanks to a uh, cooperation of our churches um, to recognize uh, the various uh, moments of contact when the uh, North and South Towers were hit, as well as when uh, the Pentagon and then when those buildings fell. Um, so um, folks are welcome to join that. Um, and um, our hearts go out to anyone certainly uh, affected by that uh, directly. And um, It's hard to believe it's been 20 years. Um, I think it's one of those moments where you, we all know where we were. It's sort of like when JFK was shot, if you were young enough to remember that. Um, uh, and on a sort of a lighter note on Thursday, um, so by the time folks actually see this, um, the master plan public hearing will have taken place. That's this Thursday, but that will be taped. So our friends at Westboro TV will bring that live and I encourage folks to watch that. So. Uh, many moons ago, we had um, Jim Robbins and Lester Hensley on to talk about the master plan. This is like that 30 year look at how do we want our community to be? How do we want to use the land? What do we need to be thinking about for sustainability and climate change and transportation, et cetera? So um, encourage folks to um, look at the updated master plan online um, or uh, watch the um, and or watch the uh, um, public hearing. So. Um, and Arthur, that's all I've got. That's great. That's great. Well, well, Laura and Terry, you made my day. It, 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 it's, it's, it's just wonderful to see what you are doing. Um, and 
to provide this wonderful opportunity for people like Frank and Mary and their children and their grandchildren and their great grandchildren to be involved in a way that, you know, it's, it answers the classic question, but, you know, what can I do? What can I, you know, a fourth mm -hmm. grader and the, you know, what can I do? It, it gives you that answer. And, and I'm sure as Laura, you did it for your kids to, for all of us to be able to give that to our kids and our grandchildren, the sense of how to really participate in community. It's all great to say, oh, it's a great community, but it, it's about participating. So it was really terrific. So thank you very much. And Shelby, thank you for thank doing you. this. This is just terrific. Folks, hope you enjoy this show. If you have a problem, if you have a need, the stuff is there for you. If you have a son or a grandson, or a, I'm thinking of, a, of the boys, or a daughter or a granddaughter who has a need, it is there for them. If you want to contribute, it's there for you too to really provide a vehicle for you to contribute to this really wonderful community. So thank you for watching and we'll hope that you will uh, tune in again on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you. <laughs>